Hello everyone, welcome to BioTales. Today we are going to talk about the topic that is cryptosporidiosis, which is also called the diarrheal disease. Cryptosporidiosis is caused by cryptosporidium, a microscopic protozoan parasite. Both the parasite and the disease are commonly known as crypto. Cryptosporidium passes through your mouth into your digestive system where it reproduces and causes symptoms. It is a single-celled organism that are only visible with a microscope. It usually infects animals and humans. Cryptosporidium hominis and Cryptosporidium parvum are the forms of crypto that usually infect people. The symptoms of crypto usually include watery diarrhea, stomach cramps, loss of appetite, weight loss, slight fever, vomiting. Symptoms usually begin about one week after exposure to the parasite. Now let's talk about its mode of transmission. Crypto is passed in the stool of an infected person or animal. Cryptosporidiosis spread through the fecal oral route, which means one can get infected from it accidentally by swallowing poop or you can call it feces that has parasites in it. The parasite is protected by an outer shell that allows it to survive outside the body for a longer period of time and is highly resistant to chlorine. Crypto can be transmitted by swallowing contaminated water while swimming or drinking, having contact with animals, especially calves and goats and their environment, having contact with people who are sick with crypto, especially in childcare setting, Swallowing cryptooocytes picked up from contaminated surfaces like changing tables, door handles, or toys. Eating unwashed fruits and vegetables, drinking unpasteurized apple cider, unpasteurized milk, or eating food made with unpasteurized milk. Now let's talk about its pathogenesis. The life cycle of cryptosporidium can be broken down into following steps. Ingestion of sporulated oocytes, release of sporocytes, parasitization of epithelial cells, asexual multiplication, sexual multiplication, fertilization, sporulation, excretion, and transmission. Now let's discuss all of these stages one by one. First one is ingestion of sporulated oocytes. The life cycle of Cryptosporidium begins with the ingestion of sporulated oocytes, which are found in the feces of infected hosts. These oocytes contain four sporocytes. Second one is release of sporocytes. Upon ingestion, the oocytes are dissolved in the stomach and the sporocytes are released. The third one is parasitization of epithelial cells. The sporocytes parasitize epithelial cells of gastrointestinal tract or other tissues such as respiratory tract. Asexual multiplication. In these cells, the parasites undergo asexual multiplication producing multiple copies of themselves. Sexual multiplication. After asexual multiplication, the parasites undergo sexual multiplication producing male microgamonts and female macrogamonts gametes. The next step is fertilization. Upon fertilization of microgamonts by the microgametes, oocytes develop. The next step is sporulation. The oocyte mature and sporulate in the infected host, producing two different types of oocytes. Thick-walled oocytes, which are commonly excreted from the host, and thin-walled oocytes, which are primarily involved in autoinfection. The last step is excretion and transmission. Oocytes are infective upon excretion, thus permitting direct and immediate fecal oral transmission. The life cycle allows cryptosporidium to infect a wide range of hosts and to persist in the environment through the resistant oocyst stage. Now let's see how cryptosporidiosis can be diagnosed. The diagnosis of cryptosporidiosis is made by examination of stool samples. The detection of cryptosporidium can be difficult, therefore doctors may ask patients to submit several stool samples over several days. Most often, stool specimens are examined microscopically using different techniques, for example acid fast staining, direct fluorescent antibody, DFA, or enzyme immunoassay 
for detection of cryptosporidium species antigens. There are some molecular methods like polymerase chain reaction, which are also called PCR, that are increasingly used in reference diagnostic labs since they can be used to identify cryptosporidium at the species level. The tests for cryptosporidium are not routinely done in most laboratories. Therefore, healthcare providers should specifically request testing for this parasite. Now we see that how this disease can be prevented. One can reduce the risk of getting crypto by following these recommendations. Wash your hands often with soap and water. Alcohol-based sanitizers are not effective against crypto. Do not swallow water while, while swimming. Wash your hands after contact with farm animals, pets, animal poop, and animal environments. Do not drink untreated water from lakes, rivers, springs, ponds, and streams. Do not drink raw, unpasteurized milk or cider. Use caution when traveling in countries with minimal water treatment and sanitization system by avoiding tap water, fountain drinks, ice, and raw foods. If one feels symptoms of crypto, then he should contact healthcare provider for proper diagnosis. People who are infected with crypto shed the parasite in their stool while they are having symptoms and for about two weeks after symptoms have stopped. People who have symptoms of crypto can reduce their risk of spreading the illness to others by following these recommendations. Wash hands carefully and frequently with soap and water. Stay out of pools, splash pads, and lakes while sick. If diagnosed with crypto, do not swim for at least two weeks after diarrhea stops. Do not bath with other while sick and for at least two weeks after diarrhea stops. Do not attend or work in childcare setting or preschool until 24 hours after diarrhea stops. Wait to have sexual activities until two weeks following the end of symptoms. Let's see how Cryptosporidiosis can be treated. Most of the people with a healthy immune system do not need to be treated as cryptosporidiosis will resolve on its own. In those who have weak immune systems, the focus of treatment is often on getting the immunity back. Otherwise, a medicine called nitazoxanide can be used to treat this parasite. So that was all about cryptosporidiosis.